In a previous episode, we have seen all 23 Grand Prix of the current Formula 1 season being compared to Mario Kart tracks. Yet, as you can imagine, many historic circuits, both of MK and F1 history, were left out. So what better way than to address them by doing another video on the topic? As usual, we are comparing real life tracks with Mario Kart, based on general racing feeling and aesthetics. Without any other premises, let us get started. We start our journey from the Far East, from the Shanghai International Circuit, which has hosted and will host many Grand Prix since 04. The track is known for her twisted turns, but also high speed, and since the track is of course based in China, what better counterpart to have in the Mario Kart franchise than Dragon Driftway? Not only the aesthetics recall all Chinese culture and folklore, but also both tracks are rich with hard turning curves full up with high speed sections. Next to China we found Vietnam, a country that was supposed to host the Vietnamese Grand Prix, but world events didn't make that a reality. As illustrated in the F1 2020 game, the track is filled with S-curves and noticeable speed traps, a track that has the same characteristics as Twisted Mansion from Mario Kart 8. I wish I could say more, but since we never saw a proper race in Hanoi, it is hard to dive in what an F1 race would look like, perhaps we'll see it in the future. We go back to the old continent for the next track, that is Algarve International Circuit, better known perhaps as Portimao. The Portuguese racetrack is similar in shape as the Spanish one from the other episode, filled with back and forth speed curves that, if badly taken, lead drivers to drift off. Mushroom Gorge from the Wii, in my opinion, has a similar level of challenge, but rather than turning quickly on the asphalt, you'll be doing that jumping on giant mushrooms. The circuit was remade three times, the latest version being in Nintendo Switch. Qatar is another circuit that hosted a Grand Prix, but will host others in the future. Most remember for its presence in MotoGP, the Lucille International Circuit has so many U-turns of different lengths and wetness, just like Mario Kart Super Circuit's Sunset Wilds, a desert circuit that parallels Qatar's Autodrome. The circuit is similar both in shape and aesthetics, and I'm excited to see more from both in the future iterations. Speaking of deserts, while the Grand Prix did not host a race yet, the Las Vegas GP will make its debut next year. The Nevada Metropolis will be home for a night race in the middle of the Las Vegas Strip, a characteristic that could only resemble what we've seen in Mario Kart's Wii Moonview Highway. Both races take place under the light of a chaotic megalopolis, illuminated only by artificial lights and the bright moon. Again, we have not seen races in Las Vegas, so I'll take the gamble on this one. Since we are in America, the iconic Waltz in Glen could not miss today's video. The track currently hosts other racing series like IndyCar and NASCAR, but not long ago it used to host the America Grand Prix too. The other drum is rich in fast sections and long curves that allow you to keep momentum and trying to overtake others. We can find a track like this one in the original Mario Kart for the SNES in Mario Circuit 4. Both race tracks are tricky to navigate at first, but fast rolling once mastered. We now move from America to Germany to explore the country home to many Grand Prix of the past. The first one to mention is of course the legendary Norgrubring Nordschleife, host of the German Grand Prix from the 50s to the 70s. There are so many reasons why I claim Mario Kart 7's Suho Loop to be its perfect counterpart in the franchise, from its structure to its length. So many similarities that I could fill a whole 6 minute and 54 second video discussing this comparison. Oh wait, I already did that. The Hockenheim is the most recent home for the German Grand Prix, remember for its unforgettable hairpin accompanied by hard turns. It hosted the event from 1977 to 2019, and I will be more than glad to see it back in the calendar in the near future. I shuttled quite a bit to find our right counterpart, but playing MK8's Dolphin Shoals gave me a similar vibe and experience to the German racetrack. I really can't describe what exactly stole me in this comparison, but it is making the final cut nonetheless. The last race to mention in this video that took place in Germany is the alt shape Avus Berlin. The circuit hosted a race in the 20s and one in the 50s, where cars were… slightly different to say the least. The circuit is just two long straights followed by very harsh r pins that used to be highly banked. Finding a comparison for this one was too easy, with GameCube's Luigi circuit being a perfect match. Even if the real GP, the straights is of course not shared. The FIA really cared about security back then and especially now. Sometimes. Our next stop is in nearby Italy, more specifically in Tuscany, where we can find the glamorous Mugello circuit. The central Italian racetrack only hosted one GP so far, but it does host many other events too. Located in the beautiful countryside, its best counterpart and fun for it was Mario Circuit from Mario Kart 7. These two circuits do share those S-shaped curves that give drivers opportunities to attack and counter-attack to eventually win the race. From one Mediterranean country to the other, Turkey hosted numerous Grand Prix in the past in our inter-city Istanbul Park. The track is rich in narrow twisting streets, giving drivers a hard challenge when it comes into racing in Anatolia. Another secret that Shaggy Bazaar can compare to the Turkish track. 
from the layout to the overall vibe of the circuit, Shaggy Bazaar is simply the best match for the former GP, and perhaps one of the best matches in today's video. Malaysia is another country that was a regular in the F1 calendar, that unfortunately faded away with time. Sepang is one of the most challenging circuits on today's list, with her famous two long straights culminating at turn 15, in a very sharp V-shaped corner. SNES Mario Kart Circuit 3, also remaining the most recent Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Pack, remakes that indentation one-to-one -one in the Mario Kart universe, as well as being a challenging track on its own merit. Even if the Korean Grand Prix did not last for too long, it gave interesting races in the early 2010s, before the turbocharged V6 era. The circuit in Yongam is best compared to Ninja Hadewe from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, not only for the aesthetic of similar background, but also for the presence of sharp l turns and long row sections reaching speed traps. Close to Korea we reach Japan again, but not Suzuka, we already seen that one, but rather Fuji Speedway. A circuit at times preferred by some to host the Japanese Grand Prix, it was home to F1 in the 70s and 2000s, and racing in it feels more like a journey, with fast turns and long straightaways. The Kepaz has to be its counterpart in Mario Kart DS, not only for the obvious parallelism to mountains, but also to the already described fast turns present in both tracks. Both are challenging, and both are ton of fun. The last Asian former GP in today's list is India, with her famous Put International Circuit. The track is characterized with the constant alteration of sharp and long turns that give place to a more technical type of racing. I had a hard time finding the best comparison, but I can see why it's cheaper from the 3DS to have a similar gameplay to its real life circuit, even if aesthetically they do not match. From Asia to Africa, we find ourselves to what many fans wish to see back in the calendar, the much loved South Africa Grand Prix, held at Kalami Racing Circuit. Kalami is a beast and a half when it comes to racing, very aggressive turns and changes in elevations that make racing here quite challenging to modern F1 vehicles. The N64's Choco Mountain, recently brought back to life in Mario Kart 8's expansion, has somewhat the same characteristics as South African counterpart, and I can see the desert diamond mine aesthetically paralleling South Africa as a whole. So far we did not mention many city tracks, but as you might remember, Valencia Spain played host for the European Grand Prix before Baku. Valencia was narrow as Monaco, but twice as fast, with incredibly speedy sections followed up by unforgiving turns. The final square from Mario Kart DS and Wii not only share the same vibe, but also the same challenging beats both cars and drivers have to face. But let's go even more in the past and bring in the old British tracks of Donington Park and Brands Hatch, who hosted the British Grand Prix. Starting with the former, Donington Park is a pretty complete track, filled with S-curves, L-shaped turns and hairpins to finish it all off in a very small distance. DK Jungle from MX7 has a similar gameplay that to the old British track, and it's not necessary to state at this point that both are located inside natural parks. Brands Hatch is slightly more aggressive when it comes to changes of elevations, with some quite heavy bankings that give no rest to drivers across its laps. The overall shape of the circuit, however, is quite standard, so I decided to pick Peach Beach from the GameCube to be its counterpart in the Mario Kart franchise. Both appear to be beginner friendly, but both can hide quite the challenge for the naive player. Nearby Belgium also hosted its Grand Prix to a different location than today's Spa, more specifically in Flanders Zolder. The wind turbine decorated track is fairly simply shaped, even if its multiple chicanes can give quite a surpassing opportunities. A Mario Race track from the Nintendo 64 can suit as a valid counterpart. Both tracks are simple in form, but have hidden complexity when it comes to surpassing your rivals. The last city circuit in the list is Adelaide, which hosted the Australian Grand Prix in the 80s and 90s before Albert Park. The circuit is fairly simple shaped wise, but it does present many 90 degree turns and speed traps along the way, not to mention that being a city track means walls everywhere. Toad's Factory from Mario Kart Wii also has hard 90 degree turns and narrow spaces between the edge of the track and the walls. While challenging, both offer good races. Second to last in my list is an old found in Sweden, Understop Raceway. This track is not too special for modern F1, and even in the 70s it was not extraordinarily complex. Yet simplicity may lead to interesting races nonetheless. The same case could be made for GBA Snowland, a circuit that at first appears simple but often gives players plenty of opportunities to find different strategies. Besides, being located in Sweden, I must imagine that the snowy track fits the aesthetics too. The course that will finish our list is one that many Formula 1 fans miss and wish to replace Paul Richard in the future, and that is the beloved Manicor. The track hosted the French Grand Prix in the 90s and 2000s, and is both incredibly twisted but also incredibly fast. A Mario Kart track that mirrors this feeling for me is Ribbon Road for the GBA, and later remastered in Mario Kart 8. Both tracks are narrow, precise and fast, and no better circus can close off to this part of the video. And there you have them, another batch of tracks that hosted Formula 1 Grand Prix in the past compared to other Mario Kart circuits. 
I admit that after completing 46 comparisons in total between this video and the previous one, some matches are a bit forced, but I hope you enjoy the concept nonetheless. Also, one last thing, I've noticed people find my videos by searching Mario Kart F1 in Google, and they might be searching for something like tracks most you see on screen, either Mario Kart tracks in driving games or real life race tracks in Mario Kart. This video is more theoretical, a thought experiment if you will, but I will leave some links to play Mario Kart tracks in Assetto Corsa in the description. If you made it this far, I thank you one too many Formula 1 Mario Kart times for watching today's video. Making this second list was not easy, and I bet that I missed some F1 and Mario tracks you loved in both videos, so do let me know in the comments what other comparison you would you make, and why. Having said that, I invite you to leave this video a like, to share it and subscribe for more. I wish you a wonderful day. Arrivederci.